Well, we're all the way up to module six in our uh, querying with Transact SQL course. Um, so far, we've covered the select statement, uh, selecting from single tables, selecting from multiple tables using joins, uh, using unions to get the results of two uh, queries put together into a single row set. And um, in the previous module, we looked at using functions to uh, get additional information from the values in our databases and then aggregating those functions and grouping the rows that are returned uh, in the results set. So we're already building reasonably sophisticated queries. What we're going to look at in this module is using subqueries and a, a special SQL operator called the apply operator. Uh, and what we're going to do here is see how we can take those queries we're writing and have queries within queries, which sounds a little bit meta. So, uh, Jeff, can you uh, tell us a little bit about what we're going to cover? Indeed, we'll have a look at subqueries and we'll talk about them in general context, context. And then we'll have a look at scalar subqueries where we're going to look at single values and multi-valued subqueries where we're looking at lots of values. And then we also have a, a self-contained or typical subquery, if you like, and a special type called a correlated subquery. And then going on to that, another way of dealing with that information is using the apply um, operator with table value functions to return similar, out, similar output. Sounds good. So to start off with, they're queries within queries. So we get a single query, select list as normal. So highlighted um, down here, we've got a select query. And that then returns its results to a calling query. So that could be a, a, a set of multiple different uh, values, it could be a single value. We have different types. So results are passed to the outer query. You can test them, a, a typical one, a non-correlated one, you can test it, you can run that subquery, it should work, and then you can try it on the outer query, or you can even actually take the results of that um, subquery and see, well, actually, if I just type them in, does it work in, on the outer query? So we've got the results of the inner query, and we want to have a look at what sort of results they will be. They could be a single value. So in here I've got select maximum order ID as last order from sales order. So we're looking at the maximum order ID, one single value. We're then passing that to the calling query and comparing the values in that outer query with the results of that subquery. Just like a scalar function that we talked about previously. Exactly. We, we're basically using this as, almost as a function. We're just saying, OK, I want to find a, a function which finds me the maximum value in the order table of order ID. And, and just using that as a result, single result. So I could actually run that subquery, say, oh, actually, what I return is 979. And then as a test, say, well, let, let, what happens if I put where order ID equals 979? We'll get exactly the same results. So it's, it's entirely encapsulated in brackets and just generates that value compares that value with the outer query. And as it says there, I can use it anywhere that I would use a function, basically. Completely. You can, you can just, it, that bracketed um, part there, you can actually drop it any, literally anywhere. You could put it into um, a select list, even. It, it, you mm. can put it anywhere you want. Once it's in brackets, it just treats that as an individual unit. Now, the multi-value one, though, a little bit different, because here we're getting multiple different entries returned. So I've got a query there that returns every customer ID for anyone with a country region of Mexico. So that's going to be a long list of, of, of entries in there. So I can't just say is something equal to this. But remember when we had that, um, that ability to search for multiple values and rather than using ors, we used an in and then a bracketed list. Essentially my bracketed list now is the results of this query. Right. So it can supply a list of values. And this one, obviously, I couldn't use in other places necessarily because I'm returning multiple values. So you could think of this, I, I mean, I guess what we're saying is a multivariate subquery is returning. You could think of it as being a table that has one column. Um, exactly, so if, yeah. if, you're, if you're coming from a database developer background, that's a way of thinking it. It's a row mm -hmm. set with one column and a value in each, uh, each row. And it has to be that way around. You can't say, well, could I use it on one row with multiple columns? Right. No, it's one column with multiple rows. And actually, if you're a developer and you're, you're attending this course because you're, you're already building applications in C Sharp, we're really talking here about the equivalent of a one-dimensional one array. Mm -hmm. It's an array of yeah, values that's it coming is, yeah. back. Right. It's essentially just a, a yeah, list of values returned to that. And I'm not looking for values that are in that list. Okay, so yeah, I see, I see. So we're going to start with a scalar subquery. Um, here we're going to build this by stages. So I've got, firstly, the maximum unit price. So what is the maximum unit price in the sales order detail table? 
So then we can say, well, what would be the results if I actually type that value in? So let's have a look of products. We have a list price greater than that maximum unit price from sales order details. So then we can search for that and that will find me any products we've got that list price. And then I can then say, okay, well, rather than typing in, it's obviously not a very scalable solution mm -hmm. to have people typing things in for different values. I would like it to work whenever. So instead of typing that value in, I just replace that with the query in brackets. So we've got a query which generated the value. Mm. We drop that in where the bracket, where the value was in. in um, so what we're saying then really is, is bring me back all the details of the products table for any product that has a list price that's higher than whatever the maximum price of something we've ever sold is. Yes. Right. In the, so it's, yeah, it's going off and having a look at, essentially we're saying are we overcharging for some of our products. So we've gone out and found the maximum unit price from sales order detail. That's the maximum we've sold things from. Mm -hmm. What have we got that's more expensive than that? And you'll see if I run this one, then we get the same number of rows, same the same, exactly rows. the same rows. So essentially you can, you can use that step-by-step -step process to build up um, a typical non-correlated subquery. You can, you can say, okay, let's run the subquery part, that works, right, just take its value, use its value in the outer query. Does that work? Well, yeah, that works. So I'm, I'm effectively re like. replacing a function just with some inline SQL that does the same job as a scalar function. It returns a single value that I then use yep. in the outer query. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. We're going to have a look now about whether something is self-contained or correlated. Now that's a very distinct thing. So a, a, a query that we've talked about so far is a self-contained query. So the subquery portion can be run and it works and then it supplies its value to the calling outer query. And you can run them independently. So I can run a value and then we can um, test it. Now this correlated idea is slightly different. So what we're going to do, if we have a look at the subquery portion of this, we've got select maximum order date from sales orders as O2, that's fine. Then we've got where O2 mpyd equals O1 mpyd. Well, O1 mpyd doesn't exist within that query. So it's going to go to the outer query, where you'll see that O1 does exist, get the employee ID value from there and use that. So essentially what happens is for each row in the outer query, return me an employee ID and run the subquery using that value. And then go backwards, logically you're going backwards and forwards each time. So for each row of the outer query, supply the value, run the subquery, then do the comparison of the outer query, then go to the next row, do it again, backwards and forwards each time. I presume because SQLs are set based, that's not actually how it executes. It's not, however they do tend to be quite um, intensive in your resources, so they're right. not the the highest before it's something you think I oh, will you wouldn't think I'll do a correlated subquery just because I can they there is a there's a logical backwards and forwards process mm -hmm. actually SQL Server has amazing optimization abilities and and actually doesn't do quite anything that complex but right I see yeah. okay the, their logic and also the logic of them as well I think it, whenever you see one it, when you get to understand them quite well you can work out what it does, but it takes a bit of thought to think, okay, what is that actually doing in there? I have to have a look at that and see right. what's going on. So, so logically, um, I, I wouldn't use them just because you think, oh, well, nowadays they're not as slow as they used to be. It's, um, yeah. it's something that is, is a bit slower and it's logically quite complex, but it can do something that's quite complicated because what I'm looking for here is for each employee ID, show me the uh, values where the order date is equal to the maximum order date for that employee so the last order that employee took in, in yeah. English is what we're saying, yeah. Okay. Okay, now I've got um, a list in here where we're going to start off with a simple query. So I've got order ID, sales order ID, order date, and it's just going to do an order by an order. So there's nothing complex about this at all. Then to take that a step further, we're going to see, actually, I'm interested only where the order date is the same as the maximum order date for, for everyone for, from the um, sales order table. So we're, we're just doing that for absolutely everyone. So I only want, I'm only interested in where it's equal to the absolute maximum grand total. 
But that's not what I'm interested in really. What I want to do is find the totals for each customer ID. So we're going to go through here and now my subquery has got this clause where it's saying where SO2 customer ID equals SO1 customer ID. Now SO2 is defined within that query, so that's fine. SO1 it won't find, so it's going to look to the calling query and say, okay, I need the customer ID from there. So for each customer ID you have in there, give me the maximum order date. So now we're looking at by customer, not the grand total, for each individual customer give me the value. So I've got the customer ID, then I've got the value which has got the um, maximum order date there for, for that customer, one row per customer. So it's returning those values from the inner query to the calling query backwards and forwards because we've got a value in there that doesn't exist in the subquery. The, the, probably the most complex thing in here is that they can't be tested. So you, if you run it, it doesn't work. It's quite difficult. You can't do that step-by-step -step process of saying, well, let's try the subquery. Does it work? Well, no, it doesn't. Because there's a dependency on the outer thing. Yeah, query. exactly. So yeah. it's, 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 uh, it's not a query where we've said you can build ones up. This one you can't. You're basically starting from here. This is a, it's my first point that I can start with. So it's already reasonably complex in there. Okay. Now we've talked about correlated subqueries, there is a technique we can use with an apply operator and a table value function, which can get us, it can do a number of things actually, but one of the things it can do is get us a very similar result in maybe a less complex piece of code. Um, you can use it to do um, something which is essentially like a join as well, but here we're going to use it to do something we can't do with joins that we could only achieve with a correlated subquery and that's using a cross apply operator and we're going to pass a value into a function. Now this function is a function that returns tables. So s.supplierID does not exist within the function. It won't know what it is. So it's going to again say, well, where do I get that from? Oh, it comes from the calling query. And s is supplier, so it goes, okay, that's suppliers dot supplier ID, I can see that, I'll get that, I'll run on that value, then I'll return the value to the calling query, then I'll go to the next line, and we'll run it in that way, in the same way the correlated subquery, backwards and forwards, run it for the next supplier ID in so, there. So conceptually the cross apply then is, is running the function for each row with a value that we're getting for, for each row? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so each, each individual supplier ID it will go to the another value to run it again, another value to run it again mm. in there. Now we also have um, an outer apply, so as well as a cross apply we can use outer apply, and then what we have is extra values for the right table. So if you take a left and a right join, in here we're going to basically say what we want is a left join, a left outer join. I want nulls in that right table because they don't exist, because I don't have any values for that supplier ID, I would like to. The, the right table in this case being the table that's returned by the function. By the function, yeah. Right. The P table in this case. Yeah. So it would be P dot product ID, product name, unit price. Mm. Those values would be null where we don't have matching records in the same way we would with an outer join. What we have here then is a function which is UDF max unit price we can run that against any sales order ID and it will go out and it will find from sales order detail the maximum unit price for that sales order ID from the sales order detail table. Okay. But I'm running it on SOH.salesorderID. Well, before we do that, mm -hmm. um, I, I know in this course we're not covering um, how to create functions or design functions, but can we at least see the, the definition of that function so we get an idea for what's being returned by it? I'm glad you mentioned that because I already have that in another... <laughs> already up my sleeve. Another one here, we have SP help text. So what we can do with this is get it to return the um, syntax of, of that function. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Now, as you said, we're not actually using this to create functions at the moment, but we can certainly see that it returns the sales order ID, the maximum unit price, and it's going to get that where the sales order ID is equal to at sales order ID. So that's actually a variable that's being, passed, that's being in. passed into yeah, it. So we're passing it that value sales order ID. 
and from that it's going to return the max unit price. Okay. So it's quite straightforward, to be honest. It's just mm. the most expensive item in the order gets passed by a code. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And it's doing that from sales order detail, where in the cross-apply you'll see that we're actually looking at sales order header. So we're saying for values in sales order header, go and look at the sales order ID and find me the maximum unit price. Right, so we're saving ourselves a more complex join here where we're joining to another table. Yes. Right. So yeah, you'd have to join them together and also we'd have to aggregate values because we're going to have to look at the maximum. And you say, well, that, well that's not quite right because the maximum sales is not what I want. I want it for each, each individual, individual order, order header. Yeah. So that's where we're back to correlated subqueries again. And this is an alternative way. We could do this with a correlated subquery, but we can also do it using this approach. Again, you are still having that idea of passing things from the calling query to the Essentially, it's not a subquery, but passing it to the, to the into function, the function which case, is acting yeah. a subquery in, the, in this case. Okay. So there's some concepts that are quite similar, but a lot of people think this is conceptually more straightforward and, and certainly easier to read. And you think, okay, I can see. Once you, assuming you understand what the function does, I yeah. can understand that. Okay, if that you effectively think think of it as being, I'm running that function for each row that the the query returns. Absolutely. Yeah. So if we execute this, we should get the same sort of results. And there we go, there's, there's mm. for each sales order ID the maximum unit price. It's the same results that we would get using a correlated subquery. Okay. So we've had a look at subqueries, so queries within queries. Remember that once when we start, we, we talked about scalar, multi-valued, but self-contained subqueries. And the, the key thing I would say is that the vast majority of subqueries are not correlated, so that you can test them as self-contained queries. So you can try them out, that works, that returns these results. From that I can then craft